Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A terrifying rollover crash on I-10 involving multiple vehicles. What police say was a big factor in the crash. And we had a major change in the weather <laughs> overnight. Yeah, that's 34 degrees that you're looking at in San Antonio. Mike will explain this change in just a bit. So for now, good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, December 12th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us, starting your Sunday with us. So it's funny, a couple days ago, out by the pool, it was like 84 degrees out there. That was we, on Thursday? Yeah, we were talking about possibly record-breaking heat. And then this morning, please describe for the viewers what you're wearing walking your dogs. Um, I had two hats on, <laughs> yes. a neck a neck warmer. you gotta, you got to keep your neck warm. Got the neck warmer. Don't underestimate no, a hat and never. a neck warmer, a fleece. Uh, Ugg boots, sweatpants. Mm -hmm. I know I'm being dramatic, Mike Osterhage. <laughs> Justin Horn always calls me dramatic. You but are I'm a... never over dramatic, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, I mean, temperatures in the hill country. First of all, look at this beautiful view out there right now. Great way to start the day. Uh, temperatures in the hill country. Yeah, mid 20s. That's not over dramatic. That's just downright frigid cold. 25 right now at Comfort. 36 in town. So we've warmed up a couple of notches. Officially, we hit 34 here in town. So we didn't quite hit freezing, but obviously uh, Lotus well below freezing, Bulverde well below freezing, and Randolph you were hanging around 33 for a while, so in your neighborhood, and your backyard you may have gotten down below freezing this morning, and then we do have a slight bit of a wind chill in places. There's just been a hint of a breeze out there this morning, but obviously clear skies, very dry air. Mountain Cedars on the high side, the updated count hasn't come out yet for today. Mold is moderate and just a, a fantastic day. You know, a nice cold start, very, very cold, and then beautiful warm up. We're almost, uh, you know, just about doubling what our low temperature was. We're going to make it up to 62 later on today. Sunny and absolutely fantastic. Tomorrow, pretty nice day. We'll start off about normal, mid 40s, get up to mid 60s, but the clouds going to be increasing. And then right after that, I mean, it's all going to change by Tuesday. We're definitely going to be heating up a lot more humidity moves on in here, and that'll be the case throughout the rest of the week. Maybe some uh, fog and, and, you know, mist in the morning, a couple of sprinkles late in the week, and then we do have a chance for some rain by late Friday into Saturday as yet another front moves through. Repeat of what we just had with the front coming through right in time for the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Mike. Well, new this morning, a man found shot to death in his vehicle overnight is leaving investigators with a lot of unanswered questions. Just before 1 a.m., police received calls for a shooting on Briggs Avenue. That's on the southwest side, not too far from South Sand High School and Southwest Military Drive. When police arrived at the scene, they found a man in his vehicle shot several times. Right now, police have no further information or any idea who they're looking for. They're hoping neighbors can give help them give them information. And another big story from overnight, a major terrifying rollover crash on I-10 near Fresno. Police tell us speed was a factor in the crash. Now, this happened around 2.30 this morning. Officers on the scene telling us two vehicle driving fast on I-10 going westbound. One of those vehicles lost control, rolled over several times, hitting two other vehicles. Now, one person now in custody could be facing multiple charges. Two people injured, including a woman who was actually ejected from the vehicle. She was taken to University Hospital at last check in critical condition. Now to the latest on that dead on those deadly tornadoes that ripped through several states in the Midwest and South. Rescuers are combing through fields of wreckage from Friday night's tornado outbreak in Kentucky alone. 22 people were confirmed dead by late yesterday. The death toll stood at 36 across five states, but officials fear more than 100 people may have actually died. Governor Greg Abbott has approved the activation of 10 Texas A&M Task Force One personnel to help the recovery efforts happening in Western Kentucky. The task force would also provide specialized technical gear and other equipment to members of the FEMA Urban Search and Rescue teams. We're gonna have more on this story in our next half hour. Texas Biomed is a local nonprofit infectious disease facility. It's worked on a life saving science of the numerous diseases that Texas Biomed has worked on. The organization's COVID work actually helped develop Pfizer's vaccine as well as key therapeutics. Right now, Texas Biomed in the midst in year two of a 10 year strategic growth plan, and that's expected to have a $3.2 billion impact on our local economy. Joining us in today's leading essay segment is Dr. Larry Schlesinger, president and CEO of Texas Biomed. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. My pleasure joining you this morning. 
Well, first and foremost, it really is amazing to think that components of the COVID vaccine were developed right here in San Antonio, as well as antibody treatments. You know, from your perspective, what did that process look like? Right. I mean, um, it's important to know that any shot in your arm, uh, any new therapy that's developed um, has a lot behind it in the so-called preclinical space. And uh, and that is really a lot of science uh, that gets us to new discoveries that really make an impact on therapies and vaccines. And so Texas Biomed, based on our mission of protecting you, your families and the global community from the threat of infectious diseases, leaned in early. It was almost two years ago now. Uh, in February of 20 uh, and really decided within a day or two that our impact was going to be in developing these preclinical animal models to enable therapies and vaccines to come forward. Uh, and really uh, with community support, uh, a lot of contributions to the Institute launched our animal studies and in two months validated those animal studies. And that's what enabled early on for us to interact with Pfizer BioNTech with uh, Regeneron and Novavax uh, and begin those studies in the late spring of 20. It was the success in those animal models that resembled the success we're seeing in humans that enabled those clinical studies to begin in the summer of 2020. And it's hard to believe that the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine that Tex Biomed did all the work on has now been a year uh, in administration to humans. Almost half a billion of those vaccines have been distributed uh, worldwide. Um, and ver I'm very proud of that accomplishment alone. A big accomplishment indeed. So just this week, Texas Biomed broke ground on a new facility. So what makes it so important? What can people expect? Well, you know, we have an 80 year old campus and we are in our 10 year strategic plan and, and the animal care complex is the first major capital project of our 10 year strategic plan in which we, we really are going to do a redo of the campus. This is an amazing project on the south end of campus. It's really four buildings, 18,000 square feet of space. Um, and it's going to enable us to greatly expand what is a national and global shortage, and that is non-human primates that help us get to new therapies and vaccines. We'll be able to house uh, almost 1,000 new primates. We'll also have a new veterinary hospital where really our 150 employees, our veterinarians, our behavioralists, our vet techs, our animal caretakers can come together and deliver state of the art humane care of those animals um, as we work with them to achieve great discovery uh, that helps humans. Um, this is going to be four buildings. Uh, and it was launched by actually a federal grant uh, from Economic Development Administration uh, um, and then a de generous donations by donors in the community, as well as institutional resources that enable us to build this building. This is really just the start of several of our capital projects. Stay tuned, our central research building, which will be our new front door building, is really what we're um, developing resources for now. So, uh, you know, these are game changing opportunities for the Institute in San Antonio. And game changing 100%. So the question is not only for San Antonio, but for you guys, what is the future of Bio Texas Biomed and what does the future of the biomedical industry here locally look like? I mean, when it comes to jobs, education, and like you alluded to, scientific breakthroughs. Well, I think um, with regard to, let's start with Texas Biomed. Um, I think you're gonna see continued growth in the strategic plan uh, as you mentioned at the outset, um, this is a, a tremendous economic development plan for the city. Um, we're talking about moving from just under 400 current employees to 700 employees. These are high wage earning jobs. We anticipate our plan will bring in about 1,700 new jobs, uh, uh, either directly or indirectly to the Institute. Um, and, um, and I think it's a, a great opportunity there are three things I'd emphasize about Texas Biomed in terms of besides the science and our growth for the future, and that is economic development. We just mentioned it's education. And, you know, currently we have about 10,000 students that we interact with in San Antonio and all 17 school districts for STEM. Um, we have internships, externships, students on campus. We do outreach. Um, it's a very important part of Texas Biomed. And then it's our connection with the military. We have a formal agreement with the 59th Medical Wing um, and um, we're expanding. Uh, we train um, soldiers in research currently. We have grants with the uh, military and we expect to expand them. And then finally, it's the culture of San Antonio. 
the four presidents of the major research organizations in town. Um, we speak frequently. We have collaborative research arrangements. It's about exploiting all the talent and resources San Antonio has to bear. And then it's about telling the world about us. Uh, we're not a secret. We're actually a great economic engine for the future in biomedical science and healthcare. And I think our future is very bright indeed. Well, Dr. Schlesinger, thank you so much for your time and all our viewers watching. If you want to see this full interview, just head to KSAT.com later this morning. Thank you so much. My pleasure. All right. So as you can see behind us, Christmas right around the corner. SeaWorld preparing nearly 250 acres of special Christmas lights, 12 different sections, each offering a unique holiday experience. So Jonathan Cotto is spending the morning over at SeaWorld joining us live. Jonathan, do you have any more animal friends you'd like to show us this morning? <laughs> I, I may or may not have a little surprise for you, Max and Sarah. You know, we've been hanging out. And I have to tell you, this is actually my first time at a SeaWorld. Chuck, we just took a tour. It was lovely. There's going to be lots to see here for guests that are going to be coming out to SeaWorld. Yeah, for our Christmas celebration, 9 million lights, Santa Claus, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and of course, animals. You can give the gift of SeaWorld to one of your friends or family members. Come on out here. And speaking of gifts, oh, my new got, friend, I brought you a gift, a Christmas gift. I can't wait to open <laughs> so it. Look at here. Our look. Oh, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. <laughs> this is Nura. She's a Bennett's Wallaby along with my friend Weston. Weston, our animal care specialist. Tell him. Hey, Weston, who do we have here? I have the opportunity to introduce you to Nura, and she is a Bennett's Wallaby native to Australia. And believe it or not, she is 15 years old. She's such a cutie. Just tell me a little bit of what she snacks on. So she's known as a grazer. So she eats a lot of grass, greenery, vegetation that you would find on the ground. And let's see if we can get a good look at her on the ground. You know, it's interesting, uh, you know, when you come out to SeaWorld, you know, oh. you help conservation projects that help animals like Nura. You know, one of the biggest threats that uh, all animals have is habitat destruction. You come out to SeaWorld, uh, the, your admission price actually helps to go to conservation efforts all around the world. So come to SeaWorld, have some fun, and help some animals. Well, there you have it, folks. Look at this beautiful creature. We're going to continue to hang out here at SeaWorld. We'll see you here in the next half hour. Max, Sarah? That is fantastic. He's had a great day. We yeah. have bald eagle, we have a kangaroo. No, wallaby. Wallaby, sorry. Nura. Time now, 8, 12, 38 degrees out. All right, we're going to take a look outside. 38 degrees. Mike will have our Sunday forecast when we come back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. We've been joking through the morning that Mike is Father Christmas because he's got the, uh, the Christmas tree tie, the cufflinks. He has the literal tree and the mug. He's just, you know, our Christmas... Our Bring Christmas, Christmas cheer. Yeah, you know, our Hallmark movie watcher, <laughs> our mother ginger at the Nutcracker. <laughs> Every day is a Christmas tie. He, the guy loves Christmas, and I don't yeah. blame you, Mike. You got to make it, the way things just go. I remember a few years ago uh, over Christmas break, and my boys had said, wow, this went by so quick, quickly. And I was like, yeah, as you get older, it just goes by quicker and quicker. So you got to stretch it out, right? Yeah, like starting that. in October. <laughs> <laughs> and enjoy every moment, Mike. Or just leave the lights up all year. Right now, my wife is probably going, Ew. And it's like there's a, something in the forest over there when I said that. So anyway, uh, still below freezing up there in Kerrville, 36 here in town, 37 in New Braunfels. And uh, the air is very, very dry. That combined with the fact that we have clear skies and light wind is why temperatures got so cold this morning. Officially down to 34 here in town. So we haven't had freezing as of yet, but good hard freeze in portions of the hill country. And again, one of the, the main reasons were these numbers, the, uh, the dew point temperatures which have been, I mean, way down there. We had teens and still have teens up there in comfort, which is some of the driest air sometimes when we get teens around here for uh, dew point temperatures. So that's a uh, moisture, excuse me, dry air does not hold the heat in very well, but then it heats up rather quickly. So we're going to be gaining 25, 30 degrees throughout the course of the day. It's just going to be a fantastic day. And then overnight, still pretty nice. Notice how the flow kind of comes back in here. A little more humidity, not anything to really notice, but throughout the day tomorrow, those dew points really come back in here and yes you will definitely notice some of the humidity especially down here along the coastal plain and that just continues on into Tuesday so tomorrow's still going to be kind of a, a normal day if you will we'll have temperatures starting off in the 
uh, mid 40s, getting up into the mid 60s. But that all changes by Tuesday and all this humidity comes back in here. So our high temperature today is going to be what the low temperatures will be for the rest of the week. Once we get into Tuesday, going into the latter portion of the week with all that humidity around here because all that moisture holds the heat in. Now, as far as the uh, computer models, nothing going on today. Like I said, tomorrow we're going to have a lot of clouds, a lot of clouds once we get past today all the way through the rest of the week. Some sunshine thrown in as well. Now, with all the extra moisture around here by uh, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, maybe a little bit of mist, fog here or there, probably the same thing on Thursday. But then by Thursday, there could actually be just a couple of sprinkly showers. And again, this is one of those computer models where it sort of broad brushes things. So it's not like there's going to be all sorts of rain out there. As a matter of fact, it'd be few and far between at best. Same thing on Friday. Then by Saturday, we do have a, a front approaching. So that's going to touch off a couple of showers around the area on Saturday. And it looks like with this long range model that they may actually linger into portions of Sunday, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing because we could definitely use some rain. It seems like it's been forever once again since we've had any uh, decent rain around here. So today, a fantastic fall day, uh, 50, excuse me, 55 degrees today at noon. Easy for me to say, plenty of sunshine out there. And then a high temperature is going to make it up to 62. So we're actually going to be just a, a shade below normal, obviously a little bit warmer than where we were in the afternoon yesterday with those that cloud cover out there only stayed in the upper 50s yesterday afternoon after officially hitting a high yesterday, though, of 70. That was right after midnight. Tomorrow, nice day temperature wise, normal. 40s up to the 60s, lots of clouds. And then we stay in the 60s overnight, Monday night into Tuesday, get up into the mid upper 70s the rest of the week. Mm, you know, a little mist fog in the mornings, couple of showers here Thursday, Friday, then another front's going to move through Friday into Saturday. Looks like it's going to be another one of those sort of upside down days where the high temperature is going to be just after midnight. And then we cool down through the day and hopefully some rain by next weekend. All right, Mike yep. Osterhage, thanks so much. Sure. Time now, 8.20, 39 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back. And go Spurs, go. The Spurs hosting the Nuggets last night. Or the last time they played the Nuggets. Huge W. The Denver Nuggets looking for vengeance after their worst loss of the season. We're on the highlights. All right, first up, bang, Devin Vassell. Well, that's Keldon Johnson from three. We just saw Devin Vassell from three. And uh, a buzzer beater. You don't want to be on the other side of a buzzer beater. But I will say... Nikola Jokic, reigning MVP, he crushed it, 35 points, 17 boards, 8 assists. Ah, for the Spurs, it was much more of a spread the wealth kind of game. Seven players in double digits, not enough in this high-scoring matchup. Denver took over in the third and four, or second and third quarters. Fourth quarter, the Spurs were able to cut the lead to 14, but the Nuggets, they were 20 of 43 on three-pointers. So they hit 60 points just from threes. It matched their season-high four three-pointers. Denver, just too much last night. They would go on to win 127 to 112. Well, I think Denver set a good example of how you react after a loss. Uh, and we did the opposite. We showed how you do not want to react after a win. So they handled the loss well. We didn't handle the win uh, very well at all. All right, well, let's handle this loss well. Because don't worry, not that much rest time tonight. Spurs hosting the Pelicans. Pelicans have been pretty atrocious this season. So let's hope for a big W today. Six o'clock here at home, AT&T Center. Pro football coverage. But powered by Davis Law Firm. before you watch the Spurs, we got a lot of football to watch. Cowboys arriving in D.C. First game this season against the Washington football team. Ooh, case at 12 sports. Very jealous. They're going to be there. As they were actually there while the Cowboys arrived at their hotel last night, led by head coach Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy out here trying to be a soothsayer, made it a bold prediction this week. Returning from the sidelines, remember he was out with the health and protocol, COVID. Now, they, he said they're going to win this week. We'll see. It's going to be up to the Cowboys, especially quarterback Dak Prescott, Zeke, and all the teammates. they got to back up the play. So let's see. You talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. Cowboys and Washington football team taking – to the field, noon, and don't worry, we got Texans too. Texans hosting the Seahawks Energy Stadium. That game also at noon. And just in case you missed one of the best, if not the best rivalry in all of sports yesterday, Navy getting a big W over Army yesterday. 17 to 13, a heck of a last play. The linebacker got a direct snap, threw someone off, jumped over someone, got the first down. It was a great game. 
So there you go. Lots of football action this weekend. I was jealous of the Cowboys. They always have the best uh, swag. swag. Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess they get it first, right? Yeah, you know, it is their team. 826, 39 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA. The CDC sharing what it knows so far about the Omicron COVID-19 variant, what the most common symptoms are, and what most of the patients who contracted the variant had in common. And a crash leaves the driver trapped inside his vehicle. What police are now saying about it and what happened? We're going to explain next. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It is Sunday, December 12th. The, the cackling mm -hmm. you hear in the background is Mike Oserich. It's been a pleasure having Mike it in has. this morning. You're kind. Well, we were going over uh, what role you would play in a Hallmark movie. Thank, we know you're a big Hallmark you guy. You said pleasure having me here. Thank goodness it's only Christmas. It comes about like once a year and that's about it. So. You match the tree behind you. It's perfect. Well, the what? role that Mike would play is the father who guides the young girl who comes back to the hometown to like her true love interest. In a Hallmark movie. In a Hallmark movie. a theoretical movie. Hallmark movie we just made up. And, uh, and I think Mike, that, that, Mike's a dashing father. I think, mm. that, I think that's, no, I, that's <laughs> uh, no, come on now. Anyway, hey, low on a beautiful day. Uh, let's change the subject real quickly here. It is absolutely gorgeous out there. It is definitely cold. Getting ready to head out the door, maybe uh, heading off to church services, doing a little bit of last minute shopping. We have some very, very clear skies right now, 36 degrees. We did bottom out officially at 34 here in town, so didn't hit freezing at the airport, but some parts over around uh, Helotus, you got well below freezing earlier this morning and really cold in portions of the hill country. That's it. 62 high temperature, a couple of degrees below normal. Beautiful sunshine all day long. It is going to be just a spectacular day. The aquifer yesterday's reading dropped down four tenths of a foot and the allergens mountain cedars on the high side. The updated count has not come out yet. Mold is moderate. And uh, as far as uh, the rest of the day, well, once again, allergens mold mountain cedar is up there. I know I showed that twice, but hey, you know, it is mountain cedar season. Got to get used to it. So throughout the day, uh, sunny skies all day long and temperatures going to warm up fairly quickly throughout the morning hours. So we will gain about 20 degrees between now and noon. And then, like I said, top off at 62, which is actually a couple of degrees below normal and nice tomorrow, but we are going to have a lot more in the way of clouds. Won't be as cool in the morning and right around mid 60s in the afternoon. Then it's all going to change, almost a repeat of what we had last week, where it started off cool and then very warm, very humid throughout the rest of the week. So jacket uh, today, maybe tomorrow, that'll be it for a while. Maybe some rain, though, down the road. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Mike. Well, new this morning, a driver having to be rescued from his vehicle after crashing into the back of another vehicle overnight. Police say around 140 this morning, a man in an SUV was driving down the access road of I-35 near Pine Street on the city's east side when he lost control of his vehicle and rear-ended a vehicle at a stop sign. The man was pinned inside his SUV and had to be rescued by the jaws of life. He was taken to Bamsey in serious condition. The people in the other vehicle were not injured. Police say alcohol was not a factor in the crash and have ruled this an accident. Top stories we're following this morning. A man from Uvalde accused of shooting at vehicles while driving the wrong direction on Highway 90 in Medina County. A terrifying situation that unfolded yesterday. This morning, we now know one man dead, another in the hospital, and the suspect is in custody. Uh, Medina County Sheriff says 31-year-old Pedro Espinosa was shooting at passing vehicles around 2 a.m. yesterday near Castroville. A 45-year-old man shot and killed another person shot in the hand. Now, Castroville residents in disbelief that something like this would ever happen in that area. Here in Castroville, not a lot happens like that. So when I just heard about it from you, I, I honestly don't believe it. That's crazy that someone would be shooting on the other side of the highway like that. So it's kind of unbelievable. Now, like we said, two people shot, one dead. The second person was shot, shot in the hand. They are expected to recover. A deputy is able to track down Espinosa yesterday and make that arrest. He's facing multiple charges, including murder and aggravated assault with a motor vehicle. Two local leaders kicking off their campaigns yesterday for their bids and new elected roles. Former Councilwoman Rebecca Villagran is looking to get a seat in D.C. She's running for the 35th Congressional District currently held by Lloyd Doggett. And former District Court Judge Peter Sakai has thrown his name into the hat in the ring for Bear County Judge after longtime County Judge Nelson Wolf announced he is not running for re-election. I have served 
the, the citizens of Bear County for 26 years as a district court judge. I have stepped down from that bench to step up to be your next county judge. We have a lot at stake in Washington, D.C., and we need to make sure that we have a, an, a relentless advocate who is going to be solutions oriented and who's going to fight for the issues of our community. The primary elections will be in March and the general election will be in November. The deadline for other candidates to run is tomorrow. All right, so far in the running for Bear County judge besides Judge Peter Sakai, former District 124 representative Ina Minjades, and the former chief of staff for the mayor. In the 35th congressional district race, Rebecca Villagran, Austin City Councilman Greg Kassar, and State Representative Eddie Rodriguez. In your morning headlines, search and rescue crews going through the rubble left behind from those deadly tornadoes that ripped through the Midwest. That's right, at Bowling Green, Kentucky, one of the hardest areas hit. ABC's Victor Okendo is there and shows us how the community is coming together to help each other get through this devastating time. This morning in Bowling Green, Kentucky's Jennings Creek neighborhood, the agonizing cleanup is underway. The entire top floor of Jada Guantane's home was blown away. We were actually at the front door. Cause I was like watching like the wind get gradually stronger and I had like a, like a freight train. Down the street, Bailey Lambert huddled with her parents as an EF3 touched down. I thought I was going to die. Winds up to 150 miles per hour, ripping across streets, splintering homes and overturning vehicles. We met this team going door to door, assessing the damage. It's just overwhelming. People have lost their homes, lost their lives. At least 11 people in Bowling Green are now dead. We haven't seen a disaster of loss of life at this uh, nature or at this caliber in our entire life at Bowling Green. This massive system, at least 27 reported tornadoes across eight states. In Illinois, this Amazon distribution warehouse bearing the brunt of an EF3 causing extensive damage at least six killed in the collapse. A nursing home in Arkansas caught in the deadly storm too. At least 20 people trapped inside, leaving one dead. Our station, WATN, spoke to one of the first responders who helped carry residents out. That was a rough one. When you have um, elderly people, uh, probably 90% immobile, trying their best to get out of the nursing home and they can't, they're, they're helpless, they're stuck. Back in Bowling Green, as residents pick up the pieces, they're not alone. Here's how the community is coming together in Bowling Green. Everything you see around me has been donated. Take a look down that hallway. There's food and water there and the donations keep coming in. And for those families who have been displaced, the Red Cross is providing shelter. And that was Victor Okenda reporting. In other news, new polls show President Biden's approval rating is sinking. The president is facing significant skepticism from Americans across a range of major issues, including new lows for his handling of crime, gun violence, and the economic recovery. As the White House confronts rising and widespread concerns about inflation, most Americans are especially disappointed on how the Biden administration is managing the issue. The CDC is sharing what it knows about U.S. cases of the Omicron COVID-19 variant. According to them, of the 43 cases known in the country, most of the patients suffered mild symptoms. The most common symptoms were cough, fatigue, congestion, or runny nose. And most of the patients were vaccinated. 14 of them had even received booster shots. The CDC reports one vaccinated person with Omicron was treated in the hospital for two days. No deaths from the variant have been reported. Researchers say the Delta variant is still the dominant COVID-19 variant here in the U.S. All right, Christmas just under a couple weeks away. We are celebrating here. We know Mike has all of his Christmas apparel, even a Christmas tree in the weather lab. But Jonathan Cotto also celebrating over at SeaWorld. I know they have lots of twinkling lights and lots of family fun uh, for, throughout the rest of the mm -hmm. holiday season. Jonathan, what's going on now? So, well, the sun is out, so we can't get too much of that display, but earlier this morning, it was just quite the sight. We're talking over 9 million twinkling lights covering a span of 250 acres with different lands uh, providing each a holiday twist. Yeah, it's true. I mean, SeaWorld San Antonio has our Christmas celebration. It is the biggest holiday event in Texas, largest light display, all these different realms. Like right now, we're in what's called Christmas market. It kind of has a country feel. Yeah, it you know, sure did. Country music. We were, we were getting it earlier. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's a dancer, y'all. I try. I try. Well, each, each realm is different. We've got an area that has like, like you know, candy canes. Um, we have an area that's like 1950s Christmas. Something for everyone. We have dinner with Mrs. Claus and Santa Claus. Dinner with Rudolph. We even have some holiday camps. You know, school's going to be letting out here pretty soon. Maybe they want to get the kids out so you can do some Christmas shopping. You know, they can send them to a holiday camp where they'll have a lot of Christmas fun, but they'll also learn about animals and, of course, Animals galore here at SeaWorld. Chuck, it has just been a treat being able to hang out with you, your staff here, the animals. It is totally spectacular, and I'm excited to come back on my off time. Thank you very much. So I think now is about a good time to go get some some abuelita. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to get right? some hot chocolate just the way abuelita used to make Just it. the way abuelita used to make it. <laughs> we That's got hot right. chocolate here at SeaWorld as well. <laughs> they definitely do. And adult hot chocolate, by the way. So, Max, I will toss it back to you. Had me at adult hot chocolate. Thank you, Jonathan. Such a fun morning over there at SeaWorld. 840, 41 degrees. Hey, we're out of the 30s. Look at that. <laughs> we'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. Days are going by fast, so if you need to mail any gifts out that you want to arrive under the tree in time for Christmas, we have a look at the shipping deadlines you need to know about. Important to note that the USPS, UPS, and FedEx all have different deadlines and mailing options for customers. Most of the deadlines, they are coming up on Wednesday, December 15th. Also, the deadlines for USPS is for the continental United States, not Alaska and Hawaii. If you're mailing out anything to those states, there are different deadlines you need to know. If you have any questions, we have all the answers on top of what you're seeing on your screen. Just head to KSAT.com. Okay, we've been talking about this all morning. Are mm -hmm. you a big fan of Hallmark Christmas movies? Yes. Or <laughs> yes, yes. Or maybe someone you know is Mike Osterhage. So right now on KSET.com, we have an article about the Hallmark holiday movies called What's Up With Hallmark Christmas Movies and Why Are So Many Boomers Obsessed With Them? <laughs> so the article is actually pretty funny. The author believes that the movies are so popular because they bring a sense of nostalgia for people who may not get to see their kids or grandkids every year for Christmas or because the movies are so far-fetched, no, but viewers <laughs> choose to ignore that no. because they make them happy. Whatever the yes. reason is, there's no denying the popularity of these movies. So before we get to Mike, because we understand his passion, Sarah, do you watch Hallmark movies? No, I don't. But, you know, Netflix is starting to kind of mm, do that trend. And I've okay. watched a couple of them. They were pretty good. But I was funny. Mike's my, over here like, how dare no, no, you? I, I, <laughs> no, no, I, I actually had this conversation with my mom, I think, two days ago. And I was, and she's like, well, because, like, my parents love Hallmark movies, too. Mm -hmm. They're boomers. And she was like, oh, you know, they're just so nice. It's nice to watch something that always has a pleasant, happy ending. That's true. And it's, I mean... Especially, you know, with everything, you know, watching all the country, everything like that. It is kind of a, it's easy to watch. Mm -hmm. it, it is, you know, simple. There's no. So what is your favorite Hallmark movie? Uh, probably the one Let It Snow. What's it about? <laughs> Christmas. <It's> <laughs> Figured that one. Well, our own no, very it's, father. It's when they go, to, they go to a uh, uh, resort where the guy was going to the uh, hotel baron was going to buy the resort and all that. But uh, they have so many great Christmas traditions that they talk about. Oh, I actually one, so. think I was walking around. My parents were watching that one time. Because I remember Can't, just coming and being like, is this movie still happening? <laughs> you know, and what's funny is because my wife is not a fan of them. And of our two boys, they're split. Oh. One likes them, one does not. Are they so. the kind that like watch, like watches from the couch? They stand up and they're like, make comments, but they keep coming back in to like watch it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our producer is like, please stop talking about All Hallmark right. movies. Father it does Christmas. feel like Christmas out there. <laughs> Go on your, the Hallmark app, see what's on there. <laughs> okay, we'll do that while you do the forecast. All right, thank you. So, yeah, anyway. Uh, a beautiful day, a great day to watch a Hallmark movie. Just had to throw that one in there. Sorry, Max. We appreciate it. Anyway, it is fantastic. Uh, if you got to do a little bit of uh, shopping today or just to be outside, it is so wonderful out there. Grab a coat, though. Uh, 36 here in town, 33 Balverde, still below freezing in portions of the hill country. A lot of folks did see freezing this morning. Uh, Lotus was down below freezing, Bernie Stage, and we officially got down to 34 here in town, so haven't hit it as of yet. Yesterday, of course, we had a lot of those mid-high clouds that hung out for most of the day. That'll help to keep temperatures just in the upper 50s in the afternoon. Of course, officially we hit 70 for a high, but that was right before that front moved through in the wee hours of the morning. 
But now we've got really dry air upstairs in the atmosphere. So not only dry air here at the surface, but upstairs. And that's why uh, we have all the sunshine, those beautiful, beautiful blue skies out there. We see this darker shade of gray and even that kind of tannish brownish shade there. And that means you're going to have a lot of good looking weather for the day. Satellite picture, obviously, there's some of the clouds we had yesterday. Nothing is showing up right now. And around the country, uh, I've got some uh, higher elevations snow out there to the northwest of us. Another big trough is trying to develop out there to the west off to the east. That is the, the line of rain that's along the front that produced those deadly tornadoes a couple of days ago and then brought us the colder air that moved on in here uh, late Friday night, early yesterday and around the country, a good chunk of the country. Well, with the exception of Florida has some late fall kind of wintry uh, temperatures right now. It is as cold in parts of the hill country as it is all the way up there. International Falls, Minneapolis and uh, Cut Bank at 31 degrees. Actually, that's a little bit warm. So here's what's going on. We've got this now zonal pattern. What we have not been seeing in the past few times when fronts have moved through are these upper level, upper level wind lines coming straight down out of Canada. Then you've got the really thick layers of cold air. So it's a very shallow layer of cold air. Yes, it is pretty chilly out there, but that means it doesn't last very long. So we keep this kind of zonal pattern and then it starts to become more southwesterly. And so what that means is it's going to be a lot like most of last week was. It's going to be very warm, very humid. We're going to have a lot of clouds around here. We'll probably have some mist and drizzle uh, really starting Tuesday morning, Wednesday, and then maybe a little sprinkly shower or two by Thursday and or Friday. But this high when it's parked in the Gulf like that keeps us in this sort of configuration. Once we get into uh, late Friday and Saturday, there is a front that's going to be moving through here. But notice how once again, you don't see the upper level wind lines coming down. So it's a really shallow front. So what this means is that low is going to keep a lot of clouds around here, pumping a lot of moisture and also uh, at least give us some rain chances. So that's a good thing with this pattern coming up as it looks right now going into next weekend. So for today, mm, just a wonderful day, 55 degrees and as nice as a Hallmark movie, uh, sunny skies, they're laughing, they're laughing there behind the camera. 62 for a high temperature and uh, lots of sunshine out there. Very dry air. And then tomorrow we're going to be uh, closer to normal readings. 43, 65 for the low and the high respectively. A lot of clouds move in. We'll start off with clearer skies. Lots of clouds throughout the afternoon. And then look at that upper 70s for high temperatures, mid 60s for low temperatures. Another front late Friday, Saturday. Hopefully some rain with this one though. And Mike, I have your Hall Hallmark movies for tonight. Sister Swap, a hometown holiday, mm. followed by a Sister Swap, Christmas in the City, okay, and a Royal Queen's Christmas. That's your lineup for tonight. Time now. Williams and <laughs> Ashley Williams that are in the Sister Swap or the actual... Uh, it's just about 851, <laughs> 42 <laughs> degrees out. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at some birthdays. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> this is Robbie. He's two years old. Happy birthday, Robbie. And Future Hallmark next lover. up, we <laughs> have <laughs> Kimberly. Happy birthday, Kimberly. Celebrate her birthday on Wednesday. Remember to keep sending your birthday pictures in. Birthdays, ksat.com. Remember to include a name and an age. We'll be right back. In the news you need to know before you go, a major rollover overnight on I-10 near Fresno and police believe speed was a factor in the crash. Officials say two vehicles were driving fast on I-10 going westbound when one vehicle lost control and rolled over several times, hitting two other vehicles. One person was taken into custody and could be facing charges. Two other people were injured, including a woman who was ejected from that vehicle. She was taken to University Hospital in critical condition. Good. And we are already up to 45 degrees out there at the airport Ooh. right now. So we're warming up really, really quickly. We had bottomed out at 34 earlier this morning and didn't quite hit freezing officially, but a lot of folks were very cold, still in the uh, 20s, still below freezing in parts of the uh, hill country, got down in the mid 20s in parts of the hill country. And we're going to make it up to 62 today, a spectacular day. And look at that. It goes from one extreme to the other, where it's back to springtime conditions, late summer almost, and mid to upper 70s. Lots of clouds this upcoming week, and then another front late Friday into Saturday, and some rain. Before we go, Mike, I do want to give you a shout out because mm -hmm. you're playing Mother Ginger for the Nutcracker at the Tobin Center at what time? Uh, two o'clock. And if you can find tickets, because a lot of folks have been uh, going last weekend, this weekend too, but Ballet San Antonio. So you're just that good. It, it is a privilege once again. So have a great Thanks. day. Have a good Sunday.